I mean, like, the salad frosting just seems so unnecessary. Like, yeah, just hide the veggies from your kids, right? I mean, but look, that's pretty... I mean, to me, it looks obvious, but I feel like if when I was seven years old, you know, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I, and to, frankly, I don't think she'll be able to tell the difference either. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Break Report. I'm your host, Frank Lane. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We have a lot of stuff to go over. If you guys want to like this video down there and uh, subscribe so you can be notified when we post new weekly videos about all the stuff that's going on in the news, feel free to do so. And we look forward to seeing you out there. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's, talk, about, let's talk about life. I, um, as it pertains to the news, I guess. Is that third story in here? Because I don't see the notes for that third story. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, uh, uh, wait, I'm being told. I'm being told that there is nothing in my ear. Let's talk about Chernobyl, because it seems like just about everybody else is. And if everyone else is, I am contractually obligated to talk about it. So as a lot of you probably already know, since 1986, Chernobyl in Russia was completely abandoned as a city due to a nuclear radiation fallout from a uh, nuclear reactor explosion, led thousands killed and even more with just harmful radiation. And obviously that harmful radiation was widespread and it still is making the city abandoned and uninhabitable for God, like thousands of years, I think, right? So the entire thing's basically abandoned and it has been for a long time. So. When you think about, or first hear about this traumatic, horrible event that took place in this city, isn't your first thought to go do some shameless self-promotion in the city to flex your Instagram account? No? Yeah, me neither. Apparently, a bunch of famous Instagrammers have been making it their mission to go to the abandoned city of Chernobyl and basically promote their Instagram and social media brands in this traumatized, abandoned and still very radioactive city. I'm not gonna show the pictures because honestly, 90% of them are just Instagram models in lingerie next to a pile of radioactive rubble. I mean, come on, we're a family show here. I have a pretty clean show, I would say. We're doing a good job over here keeping it PG. What the fuck are you guys doing? I mean, I haven't been on Instagram in years, but Jesus, is this what it takes to be successful these days? Like literally, is this what it takes to actually stand out from all the other Instagrammers? Hey, yeah, so for Megan's lingerie pick, the, her weekly lingerie pick this week, we're just gonna, we were thinking about just having her stand out by those woods over by the freeway or just, you know, by that cliff over by the uh, field over there with the sunset, do some nice dramatic shots over there. What do you think? No, 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 that's, that's, that's too easy. It's too respectful. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that because Chernobyl has been trending through, you know, obviously recent TV shows, the other media outlets, I'm assuming that's why everyone's jumping on the trending train here. It's trending. We all know, I mean, if something's trending and you're not participating in it, are you even a real person at that point? I mean, like, come on, really? If you engage in an activity, but that activity isn't trending, do you really exist? But like, that doesn't mean it justifies it. If tomorrow, for some reason, the internet decided that a great way for social media people to test their strength is to see how long they can hold a fork in an outlet, I am unnaturally certain that people would jump all over that shit. Yo, what up? It's your boy Frank here. You know I had to do it to him. The fork outlet challenge. Man, I've been hitting the gym like 30 times a week, man. I just bench press like eight miles. So you know I'm gonna be doing this. I'm gonna be showing off my strength. Remember to like and subscribe this video. Oh, well, that reminds me, our next video might be a little late, than, later than I expected, being that we have to, we're gonna be filming on an ancient uh, Indian burial ground. We just gotta get all the gear over there. So it might just take us a little while to upload the video and shoot it. Gotta flex them views somehow. Honestly, what? What I'm thinking this is, this just sounds like some <laughs> stupid millennial activity that is at the start of any ridiculous horror movie. Come on guys, nothing bad's gonna happen. Can you guess what happens next? I'll give you a hint, it's something bad. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, that is like the main reason I watch horror movies nowadays. They're so terrible that like, these people are doing such stupid shit that I have to invest myself in making sure I'm satisfied by seeing them all get killed. I genuinely need the satisfaction of watching these idiots have such horrible deaths. I mean, if that means that I have to sit through 90 minutes of horrendous dialogue, so be it. 
It's gonna be hilarious when these models, like three years from now, are still taking pictures in like their swimsuits and they have like a third arm growing out from underneath their swim top. <laughs> Look, I know that's not how radiation works, but can you at least just let me have my fun for a little bit? These people are worth like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. The least I can do is poke some inaccurate science fun at their expense. At the same time, like obviously it's awful, but I guess simultaneously, like I kind of admire that they have the guts to do that. Because let me tell you, that, that place looks horrifying anytime I see a picture of it. It looks super scary. Look, when I see something that terrifies me, the first thing I think of isn't, ooh, let's get intimate here. Hell no, it scares me. I'm not exactly over here doing photo shoots at the dentist's office. <sighs> The dentist. Well, Kraft made headlines this past week as they released a product that they hope parents can use to help their kids get used to eating more vegetables. Salad frosting. In case it's not clear enough, they're basically trying to have parents fool their kids eating into eating their vegetables thinking they're putting frosting on their vegetables. Spoiler alert, it's just ranch dressing. Ah, uh, so, so many things to discuss. All right, we don't have a lot of time left. Okay, uh, I'll be quick. So firstly, kids should and probably will be smart enough to realize it's just ranch dressing and not frosting. I can't think of like a six or seven year old that cannot tell the difference between a bowl of ranch dressing and a spread that goes on cakes and cupcakes. Secondly, I feel like kids are smart enough to realize that putting frosting on vegetables is probably not a good combination. Mainly because A, it's not really gonna make them taste much better if they don't like vegetables to begin with. You're basically just polishing a turd. And B, because the combination just doesn't add up. That's like, that's like putting chocolate syrup on asparagus. It's not gonna make it be much better even if it was frosting. According to this freaking article, it, it, it obviously it has to. It says ranch dressing on the tube as far as like underneath salad frosting. Hey mom, can I see the tube of that salad frosting? Michael, shut up and eat your goddamn broccoli. I mean, and additionally, now you have another secret to keep from your kid. That's gotta be a whole set of lies you have to keep track of now. I mean, now not only do you have to have the conversation with your kid that you're Santa, but also that salad frosting is just fucking ranch. You're gonna give your fucking seven-year-old some existential crisis like, Jesus, is anything real, Dad? That kind of shit can ruin a relationship. Are you kidding me? You know, my mom told me a few years ago that she used to crack some eggs into the milkshakes that she would make me just because she was afraid I wasn't getting enough protein. She waited. 15 years. She waited 15 years to tell me that. Haven't talked to her since. I have so many trust issues with food now. I'm basically assuming now that anytime I ask for a milkshake at McDonald's and they're telling me their ice cream machine is broken, that that really just means that they ran out of eggs. Look, there, there's gotta be a better way to coax your kids into eating vegetables. Like seriously, come on. Luckily for y'all, I did some research and I found them. All right, so there's some specific techniques here that I found on some parenting websites. I guess the best thing to do would just be uh, to demonstrate them for you guys, I guess, right? Well, I prepared for this, so. Just so we can be a little bit more realistic. Also, can this just be an example of how devoted I am to doing this report and everything for everyone here? Buying this was the most incognito, embarrassing shopping experience I've had in a long time. Like buying condoms at like a random pharmacy. You know what, I can't even compare it to that because at least when you buy condoms, if somebody catches you buying them, there is a obvious explanation. Oh, they're having sex later. There is no combination of words in the English language that will explain away the strangeness of a 24 year old male buying a baby doll at Target. Looking suspicious, I might add. Set her up like that, I guess. That looks good. She's all, she's all happy, she's got thumbs up. Perfect. If the cops came in here, there would be absolutely no need for explanation whatsoever. I got the baby. I'm not gonna name her, that would be weird. But if I had to, I would probably go with Elizabeth. I don't know, she just looks like an Elizabeth. We're just gonna go with that. Okay, um, we need veggies. Veggies. Boom! So uh, eat your carrots. All right, so uh, tip one, secretly mix into their favorite meals. Well, um, I think my, my brothers were seven. They really liked, like peanut butter sandwiches and stuff like that. So let's, let's, uh, uh, let's try that. So I guess when you finish making a not so good looking sandwich, 
So secretly hide it and mix it into the food so they won't notice it. Here you go. It's a, it's a sandwich with only peanut butter on it. Look at that. Eat it. All right, so tip two, changing presentation can go a long way. All right, um, all right, so I guess I'll just arrange it in like a shape. Look at that, very, um, very modern, says a lot. If I need to tell you what this means, then clearly you're not a, you're not a uh, consumer of fine arts. Then you just, I guess, push it to her, and I guess she'll eat it now because it's not a fucking mess. Is that it? Tip three, let the kids eat them with their own sauce. Um, well, I wouldn't be the best parent, but I mean, I got some options. We got, uh, we got hot sauce. That might, that might work. Or like a small amount. That's probably way too much. I don't think they'd be able to go for fiery hot sauce. Maybe more of a medium would do better for a six or seven year old. You know, they could just, you know, they dip it in the stuff. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, yeah, I guess you could help them out too. Just dip, get a hefty thing on there, and then look, boom. Carrot, right there. This is what being a dad is like. I, I got this shit down. Tip four, make veggies more appealing to kids. I mean, I, uh... Ooh, look at this. Look at this. You wanna, you wanna eat it? Firmly grasp it. Look at this, wow, wow. Tip, <laughs> tip five, apply peer pressure. You're such a fucking bitch. Eat the carrot, everybody else is eating it. You wanna be cool, don't you? Look, look, look at Luke. Luke just ate a whole bag of carrots without anybody telling him to, like a fucking champ. There you go, Luke, get it, boy. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's break report. I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in to us and remember to uh, subscribe so you can be with us next week. For my send off, you know, I'll keep it short. Eat your vegetables. Without without the frosting is is probably best. I mean I ate them and I turned out pretty okay, I think. Bad example.